Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with southernindianaweather.com. I want to bring you an update on kind of this weekend mess as it's uh, sort of coming in here. It's a wet night, going to be wetter. As we take a look out to our national view, you can just sort of see this uh, this uh, plume of uh, wet, wet weather coming our way. If you look really closely and hard, you can see just the hints of some small snows up here. Uh, over South Dakota and into Montana. That's our clipper system that'll come in on Sunday. It's not gotten itself to organize yet, but it will. Let's zoom in here a little bit closer on the Midwest. And as we do, you can kind of see a little bit better view of that rain as it's starting to move in. You got a little bit of wintry precipitation breaking out here on the backside, but it won't be that for us here in Southern Indiana. All rain as we zoom in just a little bit closer. We've got a, a fair amount of uh, rain coming in and well, there's just flat out uh, no way to no way to cut it. There's uh, more rain coming tonight. Let's take a look at future radar, give you an idea of what to expect as you go through your overnight hours. Rain could get heavy at times. You've got some pockets of the yellow in here that will indicate that. You notice on the northern side of the system that you are starting to sort of break this out into some wintry modes. The purple being sleet and the and the uh, uh, blue shadings there being. Uh, uh, being the snow, uh, you know, that's going to not affect us here in southern Indiana as you go further up to the north. That could certainly affect some things. But uh, the good news is, if there is any, uh, this is going to move out of here a lot faster than expected. It was looking like we were going to have a pretty wet Saturday, but uh, high res data here, well, this is. Uh, you know, this is around noon or so here tomorrow, and you see it's pretty much all the way gone as a result after that. Now, the GFS uh, doesn't take it out quite this fast, but it's similar. Uh, to give you kind of an idea of what we're looking at, if you're watching from a phone or something right here is southern Indiana. So, uh, as I put this into motion, here we go through the overnight hours, and you've got some heavy precipitation totals. And again, an inch or so of rain tonight is not out of the question. It's going to rain most of the night. There it breaks some uh, wintry precipitation on the northern side of that as well. Again, it tries to mix it in as far south as, say, Bedford. Uh, but, mm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too excited about it tomorrow. Especially with warmer temperatures tomorrow, still uh, nothing uh, nothing would stick. Maybe a grassy accumulation at best. Then that gives us some dry weather until you get into Sunday afternoon, which is the Clipper system that we're going to talk about here in just a second. Temperatures, though, as you look at it, you go through tomorrow morning, and as you wake up, well, you're going to wake up to about 38, 39, 40 degrees across the area, and you just don't move much over the course of the day. Temperatures actually slowly fall in the afternoon into the 30s behind that front, and then uh, by the time you wake up on Sunday. Sunday morning, though, you're below freezing area-wide, but you do warm up here in the southern part of the state. You warm up to about 37 here for a high in Evansville or around the 1 o'clock hour and about 38 in Louisville, but still freezing line right there below, uh, uh, right there below uh, around Bloomington there. And uh, then, of course, uh, over the next six hours, the temperatures just crash fast. So uh, keep that in mind because as we look at this, we watch this little uh, – precipitation shield from this clipper come in you notice that you'll start off here's 7 a.m sunday morning so your church services are completely clear early in the morning you should have no problems there whatsoever by about one in the afternoon you've got snow breaking off on the northern half of the state there so from indianapolis northward you're getting some stuff it's into illinois but it doesn't overtake us until between one and here's the run for 7 p.m this is this is a uh, precipitation between one and seven uh, p.m. and then it's just out of there pretty quickly after that. So, it's going to be a very fast moving system. It's not going to dump a ton of snow for us, but uh, temperatures will be falling fast as this moves in. So there is a chance that some of it uh, can stick around. And you know, with with temperatures in the 30s versus the 50s, you've certainly got a lot uh, better chance of uh, things starting to stick and with temperatures crashing hard into the 20s don't be surprised if we do have some light accumulations now again this is just uh, uh, the gfs idea <coughs> this is not high res future radar like i showed you for the rain a moment ago it doesn't see out that far yet but that particular model doesn't but you know you're not you're going to pull up radar on sunday afternoon you're not going to see an entire shield of snow covering the entire state these are going to be scattered kinds of snow showers around here so some will be dry and, and some won't uh but the idea here is all over the area you're going to be able to see something and as you look at snow totals we're going to look at 24-hour snow totals here because there's multiple systems coming through that we're going to talk about that. Uh, but if we just sort of go out here to Christmas morning, uh, the previous 24 hours, you see about the inch of snow. Uh, north of there, what you get is from, say, around, oh, uh, just south of Terre Haute here to B-Town there, uh, uh, Seymour, Columbus, and on. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, folks. 
uh, the crud that just won't go away. Uh, that's that's about what the GFS says. And then you get some heavier totals as you get up here towards Indianapolis. This is only one one run of one computer model, but all are saying pretty similar things. I do think that you know this could be an overachiever, and you might get an inch uh, come down a little bit further south than that. But for most of us in southern Indiana, I think we're just looking at more of a light coating if you get anything. Uh, so you know, just to give you an idea of what you're expecting with the snowcast, here's the snowcast that I put together in recent. My blog earlier today basically from Bloomington southward a coating to an inch and you know some of you may just get flurries out of this and not even a light coating out of this because again um, not everybody is going to see snow it's only a 40 50 percent chance of snow on on Sunday but for those of you that do see you've got a chance to get at least a light coating out of this you may not be able to measure it it might be just a dusting you may get a half inch out of this some of you closer to the one to two inch zone could get closer to an inch out of this uh, we'll just end up having to see uh, but it's not going to be a significant snow you know the only thing uh, about this is untreated roads if snow is coming down pretty hard could get slick pretty quick so your evening commute on Sunday could uh, be impacted and then heavier snows up to the north where you, you know one to two inches there around Bloomington Cincinnati uh, Terre Haute and then two to three inch swath up in Indianapolis and points northward so if you want the white Christmas that's where you've really got to go and by the way the definition of a white Christmas is one inch of snow on the ground at 7 a.m. on Christmas morning. That's the technical definition, and most of us here in southern Indiana are not going to meet that this year. A few of us might, uh, but I think most of us won't. And then by the time you go very much further south of the Ohio River, it's flurries if you're lucky. This is not going to be a very... Uh, a very forceful system and so if we take a look at the winter storm threat index this is a new index that i've released this year we'll go with a level two uh, disruptive so there could be some split spots out on the roads light snow totals likely schools closed so you don't have to worry about that right now could be some flight delays or cancellations there but it's not going to be a major event uh, it'll be more it'll be bigger of an event the further north you go but even then uh, some slick spots is the roads aren't going to be impassable at that point just slow it down now as uh, we go from here, though, we do have more snow to impact us. And so we come back to the GFS here, and I just want to quickly show you that this isn't the only snow to come through. There is, There are hints that just a little bit of snow, you can barely see it. The GFS in this particular run just has a few little dots. It varies on each run and what it does, but there's a chance, small chance, that on Tuesday afternoon and evening, there could be, and even maybe Monday night into Tuesday, the timing is varied, that there could be some snow shower activity come along with that as well. It doesn't look like much at this point, but I just want to mention it in case uh, it decides to pop up a little bit more prominent in coming forecast. We got a bigger system, though, that may come on Thursday. Thursday uh, afternoon, here is what you get. You know, there's rain breaking out down to our south, and you've got this system up to our north, and this makes it into a pretty healthy system. This current run gives us a little bit of, uh, of uh, ice with this and some snow over parts of the area as well, and that would be a pretty little potent system as you go uh go through out there with it. Now, um, just to give you an idea, though, of what's going on here, I'll look at another run here for you in a minute, and you'll see there's some very uh, wide disagreements on this. And so let me show you what's going on. For, to understand this, you really got to go to the upper level charts. And this is looking at energy in the atmosphere. And so when I talk about, uh, you know, you've got some upper level energy coming, this is what I'm meaning. So here's a piece of upper level energy that's going to sort of dive in this direction. But you've also got some energy down here sort of coming in this direction. So this is the southern branch of the jet stream. This is the northern branch of the jet stream. And so uh, the question is, uh, can these two sort of arrive at the same time to sort of marry up together? If they do, you can get a fairly sizable little system out of this and sort of watch this watch these pieces dive down. Well, there's your southern stream energy that I was talking about. There's your northern stream energy that I'm talking about, not phased up together. And you'll know when they're phased because you'll see this all be solid yellow. You'll see the energy being connected there. Watch as we get closer into the weekend system. Uh, this is sort of showing that as you get into the weekend system, then you get some phasing going on with it. And as a result of that, that's where you get a system like this, where you've got this piece of energy sort of diving down with some snows and another energy to the south. They sort of marry up on there and you end up getting this kind of a stronger storm system with it. What happens though if they don't phase? Well, if you go back one run prior here, um, 
let me sort of go back here. Uh, you notice this energy down here and this energy up here. They don't really phase very well together. Uh, they're not playing nicely with each other. And so this is the current run, as I showed you. You get uh, some uh, a pretty decent storm system like that. But one run prior, this is what we got. So this is the run that was initiated this afternoon. This is the run this morning. And now carefully watch what goes on. You got uh, some light snows from the northern stream up here. You got some rains from the southern stream. And they are not marrying up. And so you don't end up with a storm system. So the question is, will this phase or will it not? Because uh, we've got to determine that. Because uh, the answer to that is then going to determine what kind of uh, storm system potential we could possibly have. So could we have a bigger storm later next week? Absolutely it's on the table but as you uh, probably saw by reading my blogs with this one you know a couple of weeks ago we looked at this and thought it could be a bigger storm system too but the two pieces did not phase uh, and so um, in, you know it just the, t the timing is everything on this if you go back and by what I mean by phasing you go back to exactly what I mean right now this is the first piece this is a southern piece southern stream uh, coming in here and you got your northern piece back here well what would have happened if you had this southern uh, system hold back here and come through at the same time that this piece was coming through, you'd have ended up with a much more active southern, a much more active system that we would have had an even more of a headache to track. It didn't happen. There's a, a you know a day or so timing difference in between these, and so that's why you're not getting a pretty big storm out of this. That very same thing uh, could end up happening as you get later on down into things here. Oh my goodness, what in the world is this uh, wanting to do on? Come on, thank you, get back here. Oh, you got to love, love this stuff when it works. I think I clicked an ad over here on this, folks. My apologies about that. But, you know, you kind of get back over into this, and, uh, and that that's basically the difference of what's going on there. So will it be a bigger storm or not? No one knows. But let me just uh, finish the model run out and show you that uh, our storm chances continue after that. So this is uh, what you would expect possibly on Thursday. My goodness, come on, mouse. Um, <clears throat> having all kinds of problems tonight. There's, here's into Friday, and then that's gone. And then watch this. High pressure builds in, but right behind it, good gravy. Uh, right behind it here you have another storm system for about the next week on the third so another potentially big one and then another one possibly following that for the fifth so the idea here <clears throat> excuse me you've got uh, an active storm track coming up to open january and if you go back out and you look on the ensemble data for that the euro ensembles are hinting at the same idea and uh you know you, you've got a lot of snow here uh coming up over the next two and a half weeks as a result of this. And by the way, this is an ensemble. Remember that an ensemble is basically uh, 50 different runs of the same model with slightly different initial conditions to make a different result. We don't know the atmosphere perfectly modeled. Therefore, one model is not going to get it right. So if you change the initial conditions ever so slightly on some parameters and then run that 50 times and then average them all out and come up with a mean, you get a map like this produced by the Euro uh, and its 50 ensemble members. And this is the average of them. Uh, by doing that, you generally reduce errors. But by doing that, usually you kind of... Uh, <clears throat> you average out sort of the weird aberrant runs and you get a bigger picture of what might actually happen. Uh, so whenever you see large snow totals on this, you understand that, whoa, that's a significant signal. And that's what we're seeing in this. So it's hint, it's it's picking up on those multiple storm systems coming through. It's not a guarantee for snow, but it, it's certainly uh, one of the more active looks on the ensembles that I've seen in a, in a really two or three years. Uh, really, you got to go back to the winter of 1415 before you had this kind of a look coming to us on the ensembles. Uh, so that, that could be a hopes for some snow there. Let me really quickly here just take you through uh, the Euro run as well to give you an idea of what's going on with this the rain moves out euro showing us yes there is the, the clipper system for sunday as well it actually is a little bit more vocal about uh the tuesday uh, tuesday system this speeds it up a little bit this is sunday uh, excuse me monday night into tuesday morning here so again don't be surprised if we have some light snow chances put into the forecast then i haven't yet but we may have to introduce those probs and then as you go uh, later on into the week the uh, euro is wanting to not phase these two it's on the idea of no phasing you see here's your system down here 
and uh, it doesn't really give you much with a southern stream and there's your active system and they are not playing nice and phasing together so if I were going to err on the side of anything I'd err on the side of them not phasing a whole lot but uh, behind this you do have something for Saturday that comes around and it does want to sort of take into uh, account a bigger system on that so you have some multiple possibilities coming here uh, folks we've got a lot to track it's going to be a very busy active period coming up over the next couple of weeks and if we just take a look at our uh, euro weeklies here uh, our, our temperatures uh, over the next month or so we stay cold this next week we stay cold the week after that and then you start to see the models hinting at sort of a uh, January thaw as you get into the couple of weeks after that. We'll take that with a grain of salt. I think it's possible. Um, but there are some other pieces of data leading me to think that the thaw may not last quite this long. But I do certainly think that those risks are there. Really quickly, uh, by the way, uh, this was a graphic that I released eight days ago. Uh, just to give you an idea that we would be in the battle zone and here's where I my best guess was for the snow and that's just about what's going to happen on Sunday. Uh, the white is about where your accumulating snow is going to be and you're going to have a fight to get much of anything uh, south of that coating to an inch so not bad for uh, eight days out there. Here is your seven day forecast then. Really quickly, uh, temperatures slowly fall on Saturday. Rain mixing with snow well to the north of us. Snow showers, some light accumulations likely on Sunday. Uh, and then we're dry for Christmas. And then as you head later on into the week, we are going to stay cold, as you notice, and some very cold lows after this. Some snow showers possible there on Thursday, maybe on Friday. We'll see how that system trends. But it's tricky. I'll have an update to that as we go through. Probably have another video for you tomorrow as we get a little bit closer with some of the latest data. But that's your latest Long Ranger. Sorry, it's it's been a crazy week and I haven't been able to get one done. But at least we've got one done now. I'll have a shorter video with some trends for you tomorrow. Take care.